Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Jovita Christine, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you another fundamental relational algebra operation, which is the rename operation. So let's begin. The rename operation is used to rename a relation to avoid ambiguity. And it's also a unary operator like select and reject. So it requires only one table to work with. But since we are using relational algebra, there seems to be no purpose of renaming tables because we are never going to store those anywhere. It's just logical um, language that we write on paper. However, we might still want to remove ambiguity while taking a Cartesian product or another operation called natural join. And I'm going to show you how with an example. So in this video, I'm going to use this particular table, which is uh, showing you information about instructors. It gives you the IDs of instructors. There are four instructors, uh, John, Mark, Luke, and Mary, and their departments are IT, ICT, and uh, they have different salaries. So all this information is given to you in this table. And now using this, we are going to apply, um, we are going to use rename operation. So for that, first, I would like you to think of what would be the result if you did a Cartesian product of a table with itself, which means what I'm trying to do is take a Cartesian product of instructor with instructor itself. This is how it would look um, because instructor table contains four rows. As a result, I'm getting 16 rows where each row of instructor is combined with all four rows you can see here. Um, ID one is combined with one, two, three, four, and ID two is combined with one, two, three, four, and three is combined with all four, four is combined with all four. So this is the result. And there are 16 rows, and because there were four columns in instructors, we have eight over here. So th this is how it's, it's working, but what is the use of this? I'm getting to the point very soon. Now in this table, suppose I want to apply a select operation on this table, let it be for any condition, any type of condition, then how would I do it? Would it be right to write it like this? Suppose I want to compare the salary from one table with the salary of another table then would it be correct to write it in this manner? No, because there is ambiguity. Ambiguity is there because both the things are same. Remember how I told you earlier in the previous video that you should write down instructor.i underscore id and um, teachers.i underscore id. We um, attached the name of the table with the column in the sigma condition to avoid ambiguity. But now, even attaching the name of the table with the column does not remove the ambiguity. So in this case, what I need to do is something like this. I need to use the rename operation. And you can see here, I have used the rename operation in instructor. And for the rename operation, the symbol is row. It's a Greek symbol, just like sigma and pi. So we use the symbol row. And then in subscript, we will write down what exactly we want to rename the table as. So the name of the table is instructor and I want to rename it as D. So once I've done that, then I will combine it with the other instructor. Now, when I write the Sigma condition, the first time with salary, I'm going to apply instructor.salary. But the second time, I'm just going to write down D.salary because I have renamed temporarily, just for the sake of the query, I have renamed instructor to D. So this is how you can uh, apply select when ambiguity cannot be removed. Uh, this is how you can apply rename when ambiguity cannot be removed, even with, um, even with the name of the table and the column. Now let's see how we can actually make use of this. So I want you to find out 
the largest salary paid to anybody in the instructor's department. Now, if you were running an SQL query, you would have a built-in function called max, and you would simply have to apply it on the salary column to get uh, the maximum salary. But in relational algebra, we try to do everything with the uh, fundamental operations. So with this, how do I find the maximum salary? You should be able to do everything with, a, with fundamental operations. So that's what we are going to do now. Now consider in this table what I've done is highlighted all the rows where the salary is greater than, where the salary that you see here is greater than the salary that you see that side. So wherever this thing is happening, that is what I have highlighted. So for example, you can see the first row is having 50,000 with 50,000, both are same. So you can't say that this part is greater than that part. And so it is highlighted. Then um, you can see the next one is, uh, let me just show you directly. You can see here 55,000 with 55,000. So once again, it is highlighted. But look at 50,000 with 70,000. 50,000 is less than 70,000. And so it is not highlighted. So whenever the salary on the left is less than the salary on the right, we are not highlighting. Everything else is highlighted. This is because of the query I wrote earlier. Now let's remove all those rows where the salary on the left is not less than the salary on the right. So those rows are removed, which leaves me with this many rows where you can notice that on, on the left side, I have salaries 50,000, 55,000. And on the right, I have salaries 55, 50, and sorry, I have salaries 55 and 70,000. Now you can notice, and of course, this is the query we wrote, uh, instructor.salary less than d.salary. That's the query we had written. Now notice in this table, the salary column on the left-hand side is having all the salaries except 70,000 because 70,000 is highest and it's not less than any salary. So it did not appear in the left-hand side column. But on the right-hand side column, I have uh, something else missing. I have 50,000 missing, which is the least salary. And so it is not greater than any salary. So that did not appear here. Now, with this information, I can actually extract the highest salary. And you can watch how. So within the same query that I wrote up there, I have added a pie condition, which fetches for me one salary column, and that is the instructor.salary column, which means the left-hand side column, not this column. I want the other one so that I have fetched with instructor.salary salary and after fetching it, this is what it looks like. Now the task is, believe it or not, very simple. All that you need to do to find the largest salary is to first use your same query that you have written, convert it into this. So write down pi salary from instructor. So this means we, I'm taking the salary column from the instructor table. Notice I've not added anything else. The original instructor table, which I had with four rows and four columns, from there I am taking, I'm fetching the salary column. From that, I am subtracting um, the largest salary. Uh, from that, I'm subtracting this thing, the result of this query that I got here. So it's the same query, I'm subtracting it from the salary column from instructor. So what exactly happens with this? This is the instructor relation. So from this relation, I have taken out the salary column, which is giving me four, uh, three different types of salaries, 50, 55, and 70. And then from this, I'm subtracting the result of my rename operation query which gave me this, which gave me everything other than 70,000. So what happens when I subtract these things? 
the salaries that are common, uh, the salaries from the left side, which are present on the right side, will be removed, which means because on the right side I have 50,000 at least twice, that's why from the left side it will be removed both the times. And again on the right side I have 55,000 at least once, that is why from the left side 55,000 will be removed. And so as a result of this, I will get only one salary, which is 70,000, which is the largest salary. So it's very simple to get the largest salary when you have the rename operation available to you. So this is how you can uh, perform. You can make use of the rename operation. It is not actually useful to rename tables in relational algebra since these tables are not implemented at all, but it's useful to rename tables to avoid ambiguity when you want to take a Cartesian product of a table with itself. And that's uh, all for fundamental operations. We saw six of them so far, and those are the only fundamental operations in relational algebra, because you can do everything uh, in relational algebra using those six, which are select, project, um, set difference, union, Cartesian product, and rename. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some additional relational algebra operations, which can indeed decrease the size of your query, but does not necessarily mean they are um, uh, that they are required. You can do everything with these six. So if you know these six, you can do everything. But if you want your queries to look better and shorter, you might want to go through the additional operations that I'm going to do in the next video. So I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Thank you.